Hello everybody, how's it going? It's me, it's a Squishy. Hope you've all been well, and welcome to our first ever episode of The Squishy Show, featuring... Hey, what is up, guys? It's Rody out here. And this is the end of the episode, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. I will see you next time. No worries. <laughs> like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace. <laughs> okay, all right. So, enough of the commentary. Enough of the commentary. That's what this is. Enough of the jerks. <laughs> um, so, what this is, is practically a talk show for me and a Rody ad to tell you what we like, what we don't like about games that are coming out, trailers, um, show trailers off to you, tell you about what's happening with us, personal events, non-personal events, games looking forward to, anything that's happening in the gaming community that's big. pretty much yeah so yep um oh another good thing about this is we'll possibly be doing live streaming q and a's on the future of the squishy show so if you guys want that obviously put a comment down in the comment section saying we want a q and a and me and Arodiad will talk about it and you could also if you have any questions about certain games feel free to leave them in the comment section below and we will make sure to get to it in the next episode exactly or even i might reply to you during yeah, whatever. So this will be yeah, happening... We'll, we'll make sure yeah. we answer it. Yeah, pretty much. So this will be happening about every second weekend of every month, just so we have enough to talk about to you guys during that time. Um, yeah, we don't want to talk about the same thing over and over again. <laughs> exactly. And plus, every second weekend allows us to get the weekend prior ready. Pretty much. So first thing on our list to do is the latest Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. I am so looking forward to Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. You do not even know. I'm looking forward to it too. So when's it coming out? It is coming out in November. I'm pretty sure November 23rd. Oh, my birthday but I'm, is sweet. But I'm, I may be wrong, but I do know it's late November. All right, guys. So let's have a quick look at the trailer and while that plays. So we've got the release date. So positive points of this game I'm looking forward to. Oh, the main thing I'm looking forward to is just seeing Hoenn remade in 3D graphics. Because uh, some people may know if they do watch my Let's Plays, Hoenn is my favorite region out of all of them, and to see it being redone is just going to be so amazing. I Plus, know. Plus, the inclusions of Mega Evolution is just going to be amazing. If you've watched his Emerald Let's Play, you'll see. Uh, don't don't watch that one. <laughs> no, watch it, watch it. It's good. It's, it's probably one of his best ones, honestly. <laughs> um, Go watch Tom's Killing Floor. It's amazing. Hey, man. <laughs> okay, okay. That's not even on this channel, so. Anyway. I'll link um, it. <laughs> you wouldn't. Anyway. Um, <laughs> So yeah, I'm looking forward to the fact that you can fly, like 3D flying. That will be amazing. Like, pretty much, you can get on a Mega Latios and Mega Latias and fly around. And the most, the big thing that draws me towards that aspect is you are able to catch every non-event legendary that's ever been in any Pokemon game in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. Hands down, that will... I like my legendaries, and I like being able to catch them. It did get a bit monotonous having to transfer them from one game to the other from the other, back when we had GBAs and SPs, if any of you are old enough to remember that. Transferring like Groudon and Rayquaza from Ruby and Sapphire over to Platinum and then to yeah, Black and White, one and two. Now we can get them all at once, that will be that will be very nice. One thing that's a really cool thought is you can't you can't like trade Pokemon from the original first gen and second gen from Game Boy Color games, but you can start from Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald and work your way up. So it's cool to think that you can get a Pokemon all the way from original Hoenn games back into new Hoenn games. That's that's nice. That's that will be very nice. Very nice. It's a really indeed. cool thought. Like I'm gonna trade over my like all my Pokemon that I've had. Like I had an Azumarill called Balloon. You oh know, God. I love that thing so much. But anyway. And <laughs> uh, what about Mega Evolutions? What other Mega Evolutions other than Mega Latias and Latios are you looking forward to? There are so many I'm looking forward to, but the main ones are, have to be Mega Altaria and Mega Beedrill. I love those things so Why is much. That? Well, Mega Altaria is a big fluffy marshmallow, and I love that thing so much. <laughs> Not only that, it. it has the ability pixelate, which means every normal type move becomes a fairy type move, and then gets stab added to the end of it. Oh, yeah. So I like to run a physical Altaria, and then you can teach it Return, which is the which is the strongest. Well, it's going to be the strongest fairy type move with pixelate, because the strongest before that is Play Rough with 90 base power, and then now with Return you got 102 base power. So pretty much, it's got the strongest fairy type move at its disposal. It's got Dragon Dance. It's got Earthquake, Dragon Claw. That's all you really need. It's also got Roost for recovery. So you've got amazing. some nice plays that you can do with that for many situations. Then. Oh yeah, easy. It's very versatile because its attack and special attack are exactly the same, and they're both very good. And not only that, its defenses are pretty good as well. So you, like your opponent, won't know if you're running a physical or a special. 
Very nice, very nice. So what about Mega Beedrill that you spoke about? Well, Beedrill, I used a Beedrill in my Leaf Green Wedlock Challenge, and it's not that good. <laughs> it's not that good. <laughs> However, what they've done is when a Pokemon Mega Evolves, it gains 100 base total stats. Right, and that could be into attack, defense, special attack, whatever. Well, what Nintendo has done is no, they know no one uses a special attack on Beedrill. So they've actually taken away points, so it's just base 15 special attack, which is terrible, but they're redistributing those points they're taking away into attack and speed. That's not bad. So it's going to be, it's got base 145 speed and 145 attack, which is through the roof, and it's got an ability, adaptability, where if a move is, I'm pretty sure if it's stab, so if it's the same type as your Pokemon, it gets an extra boost. Wow, that's that's not bad. That's, that's going to be amazing. It's going to be amazing. So you've got quite a few good Pokemon then that you can have a good play round with. Some very yeah. nice versatile teams coming up. Not only that, I've actually had a theory right from the beginning as soon as Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire was announced that I'm really hoping it comes true. Because if you guys don't know, Groudon and Koga don't get Mega Evolutions, they get Primal Evolutions. And in the original games, there's the Blue Orb and the Red Orb. And I was thinking that those could be like the Primal Stones. Okay, that's, that's because, not bad. That could work. Because it was said in the Hoenn game that that is there to like awaken the power of Groudon and Kyogre from when they were like in their primal state, I guess you could say. Okay. So, when it, with primal evolution, I think it only sees fit that... Because a Pokemon to Mega Evolve needs the Mega Stone. I think that would be the primal stone. Okay. Okay. And that's, that's the thing. There are like... I guess you could say there are like a little bit of negatives with it. Like you cannot catch many you can't catch any event legendaries in the game which i'm extremely annoyed about but Why? besides that i don't i don't if they're know event pokemon they should be kept to events yeah LB, but maybe you should have event once a year where you can go back and catch them all yeah how pokemon but, works is if you have an event and you miss it that's it mm. and like you can't get it. and when you're trying to complete the pokedex it's really annoying i know what you mean i, I can understand that Obviously, That's they're the events, so if you miss them, you miss them, but I think maybe having a once-a-year event where they all come back in won't be too hard. I mean, it's already programmed in. Yeah, okay. not only that, a lot of events are region-locked. So, like, Japan only gets it, or, like, that Europe, Europe only gets it. And it's just like, so we would, so from us in Australia, we would have to go and trade with someone from Japan, and we don't even speak Japanese, so it's going to be a very hard conversation to have just to complete the Pokedex. All right, and guys, so Pokemon, we've got so. a new series coming out, Arodiad and Forever Squishy go to Japan and Europe. Oh, um, yeah, blog it up. <laughs> if you guys want to kindly donate to our friends. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We've just got a Kickstarter going and I'm uh... <laughs> <laughs> Just joking, guys. Boy, my games. Boy, all my games. <laughs> but what are you looking forward to in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire? For me, it would honestly be mm, replaying. I... Uh, Emerald was my favourite of all time. I loved Emerald. Um, uh, that's my favourite too. I love Emerald. And the flying. The flying will probably be a big seller for me. I loved X and Y in the 3D. I loved how the camera angles actually changed like that. How in Towns yeah. it was 3D and when you was in a normal area like a dungeon say. It wasn't. That was amazing. And now obviously you've got the extra flying and you've gone back to Hoenn. <laughs> Exactly. That's you've enough got, for me. Not only that, secret bases are a thing now, and what yes. you can do with your secret base is you can make it your very own gym. Mm -hmm. And you can have your own gym trainers. And not only that, you can send it through QR code, so I could scan a QR code and then challenge your gym. That would be awesome. So I could have like another Elite Four run straight like that. Then yeah. I could put you in as a trainer in my gym if I really wanted to. It'd be unbeatable. Well, no, that, I it's, suck. It's, it's, <laughs> it'd be an guys. awesome thing to have with for LPs, like yes. for let's players like ourselves, we could have a gym and go, hey, let's see if you guys can beat it, put up the QR code mm -hmm. and see if you can actually do it. Yep. And then when you beat it, you don't get a badge, you get a flag, and those flags are used to say, hey, I beat this gym and things like that. That'd be very good. And obviously, so, we do end up doing some of that. I'm sure me and Rodiad can think of some special prizes to give away on here for the first 10 or whatever that managed to do it, I don't know. I'm sure we could do something. Alright, so on to the next game. This is going to be my personal favourite, Resident Evil Revelations 2, and obviously the re-remake of Resident the Evil re 1. The re-remake. Well, that's what it's but called. Dude, dude the re's cancel out, but then there's a re in Resident Stop Evil. Stop it! So, there's, <laughs> it, it counts. Well, no, because remember, on the, it was originally Resident Evil, then you had the director's cut, then you had the remake, so it's called literally Resident Evil Remake, but fans just called it the remake because RE make. Yeah. Right? But now you've got the remake of the remake, so do you call that re remake? You remake, call it HD remake? remake? I guess you could, considering they're not really HDing it. Capcom. <clears throat> Take the hint. 
Anyway, Capcom so just wants money. They and do. Like, They're hey, going down uh, Marvel so Marvel vs. Hard. Capcom. Here, are thirty bucks for a downloadable character. That's that's good. Yeah. Hey, Capcom's nah. gone down. So it's Cap it's going down. They need to bring back Mega Man for God's sake. Well, that's because the original guy left. Anyway, let's play the trailer for Resident Evil Revelations Two. So that'll be playing on right now. So mm. I'm looking forward to having Claire back. Claire from Resident Evil Two. She's gone back to being badass. She's not. She's not the helpless damsel in distress that she was in. Code so she's Veronica. not a Sakura from Naruto. <laughs> no, no, she's definitely not. Um, <laughs> no, stop it, Naruto. Anyway, yeah, <laughs> no, it'll Naruto. be very good. And we finally get to play as Burton's daughter, which means we may instead of having Chris come to save the day, we might have Burton come to save the day. And obviously, Burton's being name pound, just sounds badass, personally. He's Barry Burton, Burton man. Man, come on, Burton? he talks about jivel sandwiches. Jivel sandwiches. Come on. <laughs> so hopefully, we're gonna get some of that. Enemies look amazing. You've got plenty of potential for weapons. Obviously, it's Capcom. With they, if they take Resident Evil Revelations One and make it, you, it Revelations One wasn't that scary, to be honest. It wasn't scary. It had jump scares. I have to scares. trust you on that because I've never yes. actually played it myself. And hopefully, when I'm able to upload that, because I've got, I'm getting a better PC. But we'll talk about that later. Revelations One, it had that feel of original but not the scare factor, which was a bit more RE4-ish. So if they can take that and make that a bit better, I honestly think they'll have a much better chance of doing a good game. Like, I don't know much about Resident Evil, but I do know that the original factor, well, maybe not as important to a remake, but I do know it is very important to a game in general. Yes, and I also like the old over the shoulder again. That will be lovely. I'm always a big fan of those. So, yeah. and obviously with the HD remake now, which I will play the trailer for now. That that looking pretty good. It's not looking too bad. Um, well, it looks. Well, if it's, it's HD, it better be. <laughs> well, unfortunately, with Capcom, when they say HD, they change a couple of water polygons, and that's it. Oh yeah, but those water polygons make a difference to the gameplay. Yeah, totes. I mean, you can totally <laughs> swim. Anyway, Dude, the water polygons are the main protagonist. Didn't you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I completely forgot about that. It's not Crystal Jill anymore. But no, no exactly. it doesn't look too bad. They've got HD voice acting. My DVD player just activated randomly. Um, but okay. yeah, they've, they've upped the voice acting. Um, weapons sound better, apparently, according to Capcom. Yeah, according to Capcom. So take all so this with a grain of salt. So reusing sound bites. <laughs> take this with a grain of salt. Um, yeah, the, according to Capcom on RE.net, don't know if it's confirmed or not. Well, I can't say don't know if it's confirmed or not. On RE.net, there was a lot of talk about being multiplayer in a mercenaries mode. Um, okay. There's most definitely going to be online capabilities, but the fewer fact that they're releasing on day one now, Chris and Jill BSAI costumes. Don't know why you'd go for that, because the Stars costumes are better anyway. I mean, if mm. you want to see a man that can push over boulders, go right ahead. But... That's Link. He's got the, the bracelet that helps him pick up rocks. No, 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 no. Chris punches a boulder in RE5. Yeah, but Link picks that up. But... He's been going to the gym. <laughs> the, this is supposed to be real life. Sort of thing. That, oh, yeah. So, Link isn't obviously real. There are like fifteen of him. One of them has to be real. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Anyway, yeah, I'm quite looking forward to those two. We'll see how they go when they come out. Revelations Two is higher on my list than the HD remake. I just know you love Resident Evil, so anything I do. Resident Evil is going to be good for you. I do. I do. And I've got more about that later on in the show. Ooh, exciting. I know. Well, for me it is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> on to our next game, one that both me and Arodia definitely love, is Borderlands the Pre-Sequel. Ah, oh, here we go. Borderlands Pre-Sequel. I know it's out, but I cannot play it on my computer to save my life because my computer's terrible. But I love the concept of Borderlands Pre-Sequel. Like, for one, you might be thinking, well, it's not Borderlands 3, so why is it so good? Personally... I just love the idea of a pre-sequel being right in the middle to like kind of link the games, just flush out the story a little bit more. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because Borderlands has always had like the story with the Vault Hunters and trying to get the vaults and everything like that, but the story hasn't been too much. But the one thing that really draws me to this is it's made by 2K Australia. And if you guys do not know, Tom and I both live in Australia, so there are going to be a lot of jokes in there that I've seen that I've actually laughed my ass off at. It really wouldn't surprise me if somewhere in there there's a kangaroo that you can ride around. It really <laughs> wouldn't surprise me. So I'll trip the trailer up for that now so you can all have a watch. Have a listen to some lovely, what is it? Do 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 do. Final countdown, that's it, that's it. I had to replay the song. Final countdown. My ears just bleed. No worries, mate. I but love yes, that. There's a lot it. more guns now, there's a lot more variety. Um, the gr the grinder's back, so if you yes. have like three terrible guns, 
you can always grind them up, get a better one. And yep. one thing that I do know is that Moonstone is like the, like one of those rare currencies. I forget what it was in Borderlands 2. It was like that weird purple ingot yeah, sort uh, of thing. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. But yeah. Moonstone is the currency in this game, and it's a, a lot more plentiful, which is good because you can use it to buy more backpack upgrades, yeah. more upgrades for your ammo, and like that. But there's also the inclusion of new drinks, and new drinks for a certain amount of time give you a certain amount of perks. Obviously, always so, a better thing. Yeah, so... Have more on the merit. And Claptrap, so you can like... finally play as Claptrap. Um, oh, Claptrap's amazing. Claptrap Stop. sold me. I love Claptrap. Everyone says Clap... he's annoying, and, he, and he's annoying. He's annoying. Nobody can dispute that. But he's so annoyingly funny. I Come love on, it. guys. Claptrap's the sort of guy you can walk, kick in the face, and he'd laugh it off and pull a joke. There's one sound like that he has where if he kills someone, he's like, Whoa, what's this feeling? I'm beginning to develop self-confidence. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that, that's my favorite Claptrap line of all time. I love that so much. Because <laughs> every it's like an on-running joke that no one likes Claptrap, but in every like 2K knows that we love Claptrap. Mm -hmm. And they love Claptrap too, I can guarantee you. They wouldn't stick him in this as a playable character if they could. Nah. But he's just one of those characters where you can poke fun at and just have a lot of fun with. Yep, and as Mina Radio was talking earlier on Skype, we actually figured out that if you have Claptrap's random ability, which one of them may very well be where your damage is increased but you're more inaccurate, and then mix with one of the other characters who can always make you crit... It's it's a deadly thing, because pretty much, with uh, if you don't know Claptrap, he can he gets a, an, a certain ability, it's a random ability, that best fits the situation that you're in. So you could get magic bullets, you could get um, ones where you can't stop firing but it doesn't take away any ammo things like that that best suit the situation and one of your other characters if you're playing two player has um it's kind of like a, a western kind of thing where critical hit like all the time when they zoom in and it always auto locks in so pairing that up with doing more damage with your guns but being less inaccurate doesn't really affect you because you're always going to hit crits and it's just amazing against bosses it is amazing mm -hmm. so that's that's a very good place if any of you have got borderlands pre sequel give it a try with a couple of mates tell us how it goes in the comments i'd love to hear if it works or not not only that i just love the charm the game has i don't know if i said it already but the charm is just amazing like the the humor might be vulgar but i love it and and it has the nice visuals it's the it's the only game i yeah, can really say that has it's... visuals like that it's a very unique visual style but they pull it off well mm-hmm mm-hmm Alright guys, on to the next game. Now that we've talked about Borderlands Pre Sequel is one of, another one of my favourites. <laughs> because one of my favourites lately is Persona 4 Arena 2 Ultimax and Persona Q. Persona 4 Arena 2 on PS3 and Xbox 360 and Persona Q on 3DS. Mmm! <laughs> Damn! So I'm gonna play the Persona 4 Arena 2 trailer first, because that's just kick ass. And the Persona 4 Arena 2, November 20th, Persona Q November 5th, December 5th. Oh, I am ready. I am ready. You can take all my money, Atlas. Take it. I'll take I'll, it. I mean, I'll, I'll take it. You're not Atlas. Hands. Shut up. I will just hey, throw I, I played money Portal at two. them. Atlas and Peabody were a thing. I I'm just going to chuck chucking Dosh at Atlas, <laughs> like in Killing 4. Oh, man. I can't wait. I played Persona 4 Arena 1. The fighting that is amazing. It's simple enough for anyone to pick up. You just hit X and you do an awesome combo. It's hard enough that you can do different analog style combinations. And it's like Street Fighter with swords. You have... Many combinations, long range attacks, short range attacks, the best fit your opinion, so, best fit your person, and oh, and now I've never played any Persona games, but from what you're saying, I can assume that it's very easy to pick up and play and have a yes. good time. But there's the depth that if you're searching for, it's there. Yes. See, now I'm going to okay. go to a Rodeo's house and kidnap him, so he has to sit and play. But oh, and now <laughs> in Persona 4 Arena 2, they've added shadow characters of everyone bar Sho Minazuki and one other, I do believe. I um, can't remember who it is. Oh, well, neither I can have, I, because I never knew yeah, it. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm scratching my head now, but anyway. The show... The, the show. The shadow characters, they play exactly the same as Persona 4 Arena ones. Less defense, more attack. Okay. So, they're much more... If you want to play the exact same way you did in Persona 4 Arena 1, that is who you go for. They have no story mode. To play story mode, you still have to play the original characters. But very much so, if you want to go back to the old way, you go in for the shadow characters. Persona 4 Arena 2 characters, the new ones, however... They are much, they are much more balanced, much more dynamically enabled to pull off many more combos in rapid succession with a much more diverse range of set, a set of moves. So okay. what you're saying pretty much is there's a lot of variety. Yes, yes, so okay. much variety. And there's, I think the roster's now gone up to 30 characters. Um, I know you've got the crazy cabbage cop. 
<laughs> what? <laughs> well, oh. I'm trying to think of his name, and I'll think of it as soon as we finish this. The I'm crazy sure camp cop. Yeah. Oh, and he's the, and he's the main antagonist of Persona 4 as well. Adachi! It's the water, Adachi! It's the, it's the water pixels from yeah, Capcom. Exactly. Yeah, Adachi. Adachi's gonna be there. They've added him as DLC now for day one. Um, you've got, you've got, you've got the random chick that they had, Marie, in from Persona 4 Golden. I, I, I have so many mental blanks now that I'm trying to think about it. Um, but yeah, well, I had, can't help you, really. I know you can't. Yeah, and I know they're adding a couple more in. Um, this time DLC won't just be glasses. Um, <laughs> or five character color changes for each character. Um, no, they're planning on adding in a lot more. Um, and the story is apparently much more diverse. So yeah, just to top it off with all the variety. Yes, with with much more variety, <laughs> there is more variety. Oh, and obviously you've got the more you've got the entire original cast now, bar the protagonist from Persona 3, because the Persona 3 protagonist is dead. <laughs> um, everyone knows that it's not much of a spoiler anymore. Persona 3 came out years ago. I didn't know. Yes, you did. I told you beforehand. Oh, well, I didn't pay attention, obviously. Damn, but yeah, um, yeah, you've got you've got you've got Takiba's coming back, the dogs coming back, Ken's coming back. And Junpei is coming back, so you've got the entire Persona 3 cast. I like Persona Junpei. Th it sounds like a type of dip. He plays baseball. And that, that Junpei, doesn't correlate. <laughs> Junpei is actually going to be a really interesting character to use because. Would you Junpei for him? Boom. <laughs> and Squishy just died. Anyway, um, <laughs> no, with Junpei now, he plays baseball, and the way he attacks is that you get extras every time you hit, and with those extras, they can power you up. So the more hits you do, the more powerful you get. So I'm quite looking forward to seeing how that's going to work out with Junpei playing against someone like Narukami who can do a much more long range attack and push you back. I'd love to imagine, but I can't. I'm going to have to show you. Anyway, well, you can watch the trailer when this is out. And then also yeah. we've got Persona Q on the 3DS. That will be amazing. I might, oh. but is, like, how is Persona Q like for the 3DS? Is there any like drawbacks towards it? Yes. Yeah, see, Persona Q is what fans have wanted for years. A crossover between 3 and 4. All Persona 4 characters, all Persona 3 characters meshed into one. You have an amazing character. And even the protagonist. The protagonist is brought back. Um, not Damn much... water pixels. I know. The water pixels, man. Because anyway, um, according to what Atlas have released, Persona Q is when Persona 4 team, the investigation team, hears the bells at their high school during the cosplay event, or the cross-dressing event, I should say, and they're transported to a massive dungeon with the Persona 3 characters, Persona 3 characters here from Tartarus, and they're all meshed into one. And the thing I like about it is, it's it's sort of turn-based in movement, but you still have your good old Persona 3 4-style attacks. So not only can you still attack, defend, magic, personas, all that in the battle, you can move, and as you move one space, a monster will move one space. Okay. So it's a bit like Mystery Dungeon from Pokemon in that regard. So if you look at that game in its movement, it's much more like that. You've got a map and your characters on the bottom screen, and you move on the top screen. Don't ah, know see, if this now is... I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Now, I don't know if it's completely confirmed or not. I did read online, though, that you can shout out commands to certain characters. So you could pretty much let them, like, tell them what to do. Yes, without having to tap. That is not... I cannot confirm that right now, though. So take that as hearsay, and obviously when it comes out, we'll completely check it out. It's like Phoenix Wright with the objection where you can stream yes. it. Yes, yes. Okay. Exactly like that. And Phoenix Wright is right. amazing. Everyone knows that. So we'll go on to the next game, which is one of your Rodiad's favorites. Ooh, here we go. Kingdom Hearts 2.5 Remake and Kingdom Hearts 3. So I'm going to start off with the original 2.5. But if you guys do not know, 2.5 is a HD remake of Kingdom Hearts 2. Kingdom Hearts, I'm pretty sure it's Birth by Sleep and Rechain of Memories. I could be wrong with that, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. So, if you guys did not know as well, there was an original 1.5 that had the final mix version that Japan only got, which had recoded Kingdom Hearts 1 and I'm forgetting 358 over two days. And okay. as you can tell, I'm really excited, so I'm talking a bit fast. I'll slow down. But Should we chuck in a trailer right about now, I think? Yeah, yeah, we'll chuck in a trailer. Okay. But pretty much with these games it's a great introduction to players that haven't played it from like its original start on the ps2 because mm -hmm. like there are a lot of younger players now that have grown up with the ps3 and i feel like i can get a lot of joy from the kingdom hearts franchise although the story is extremely hard to follow the gameplay is solid as well so the what um square enix has done is they've re-released every single game in the franchise like 
in like in an order so you can actually follow it and play along so then when Kingdom Hearts 3 comes out you wouldn't be lost pretty much and um <laughs> okay and then uh, there's also Dream Drop Distance on the 3DS there has been rumors that Square Enix wants to remake that in a HD before Kingdom Hearts 3 but one of the main arguments is that game actually came out two years ago and isn't very old so they're not thinking that they need to remake it which I see where they're coming from however if you do not have a 3DS and it's one of the next titles in the Kingdom Hearts franchise you won't be able to play it so so I do think a HD remake is needed but Kingdom Hearts 3 looks amazing so far we've only seen um, certain trailers that should be coming up on the screen right now certain trailers and gameplay trailers not too much has been given away but we do know that it is going to end the Xehanort saga. So pretty much the whole convoluted story of Kingdom Hearts is going to end on this game. Like but Naruto. <laughs> don't end... I love Naruto. But um, pretty much that's going to be the end of the Xehanort saga. But that doesn't mean it's going to be the end of Kingdom Hearts. Because uh, Square Enix has confirmed that Sora is going to be the main protagonist for the next Kingdom Hearts games. Which means there's going to be another story. So pretty much I am extremely looking forward to this. The only thing that makes me annoyed is that it is a PS4 and Xbox One exclusive. <laughs> so you'll have to come to my place because I'm picking up a PS4 for my birthday, November 23rd, cannot wait. Um, and it sounds a lot like they're taking a page from Konami's book, finishing Solid Snake Saga and MGS4. Now they've released five with Big Boss, so they're all tying it back up together. Yeah, is that pretty, pretty much, much what you're talking about? They're pretty much just trying to get every every part of the story because the one thing that held Kingdom Hearts down was that it like all the story games were on many different platforms. Like it started off on PlayStation 2, then you had um, Rechain of Memories, I mean Chain of Memories before the remake, which came out on the GBA, and then you had Kingdom Hearts 2, which came out on the PS2, then you had Birth by Sleep, which was on the PSP, you also had re uh, Coded. Like just just normal coded, which was actually a mobile game, Jeez. but then was created as recoded for the DS, and they had three five eight over two days, which I don't know. I think it's for the DS as well. I'm pretty sure. But but pretty much as you can see, there are a bunch of different platforms that it has been on, and it's also if you didn't own the platforms, then you wouldn't have been able to keep up with the story unless you looked at it online and things like that. And that's so that's all over the place. Even I I lost count after Kingdom Hearts two. I I tried playing it, like no, I can't do it. Exactly, but that's why I like what they're doing with the HD remix because pretty much if you own a PlayStation, PlayStation 3, you can play every single Kingdom Hearts game that leads up to uh, Kingdom Hearts 3. Which is which is good. A which legacy is very good. Which, which is, is yes. which is very good. Yes. Not only that, Kingdom Hearts 2.5 has some amazing, and when I say amazing, I mean amazing pre-order uh, pre things that you get. And my favorite is a little plushie of the Heartless. I don't know, I don't know why that's my favorite. I love it. Right. But, uh, and it also comes, if you pre-order it, it comes with Kingdom Hearts 1.5 as well for free. Oh. So you get two games for the price of one. That's that's pretty good, because then you have every single, or the main story point. Up you have that. six of the seven games. Which is which is good. Which is always for, good. For, I think it's $99. That's that's not too bad. That's not too bad, because I mean, COD just came out as 109 I know, but for two games, well, th technically six games. Yeah. Right? Even though two of them are like in a theater mode. Yeah. Still doesn't matter, right? Two games, then you've got Heartless plushies, like a Disney pen, you've got like a metal box, an art book. Right? It's it's a lot for nine nine bucks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? And I just think it's very, like, it's like it's really worth it, it in my be. opinion. It will be. And I'm looking really forward to Kingdom Hearts 3, although I cannot play it. <laughs> You'll just have to come to my house, that's fine. Exactly. On to the next game. This is something all of us can enjoy. Killing Floor 2. I know, I know you're very mm. excited, and I know you did a, like a reaction when it was released. Oh. And I'm, I'm I... still that pumped, man. Because Killing Floor just... is one of your favorite games of all time. Isn't it, it is. I've clocked 180 hours in the first one. <laughs> there was a time back when it first came out in 2009, and my mate was like, "Oi, Tom, let's go play COD." I'm like, "I can't. I'm playing this new game I got." I went from Friday to Sunday with no sleep. <laughs> I just stood up, and I didn't even realize it. My mum walked into the room, she's like, Tom, what are you doing? Have you been to sleep yet? I'm like, no, mum, I've got to kill one more. And I killed, That's and not I killed healthy. The, and I killed the patriarch, and mum's like, you do know it's ten past ten in the morning on Sunday, don't you? And I just froze, <laughs> and I sat there for like five minutes, like, no. <laughs> what is happening? 
But yes, like, I'm, I'm very looking forward to it. I can't say I've played it. a game. I can't say I've played a game for that long because I don't think it's healthy. But it's not. It, it, it really can, wasn't healthy. I can tell you're looking forward to Kingdom Hearts. Uh, no. <laughs> Killing Floor. Yeah, Kingdom Hearts of the Brain. Yeah. Killing Floor 2. Yeah, so we'll check is, the trailer up now. Has there been a trailer? Yeah, yes, say, there's been multiple trailers, trailers up now. Um, several Z diaries, so meet with the developers and they talk about the game and how they're going. Many things I'm looking forward to in this game, many things. Inclusion of more characters per lobby, up to 12 instead of 6. Doesn't sound like much, but when you're fighting 300 Zeds plus on Hell on Earth, the extra help will be needed. Nah. And for guns, the guns are the best, because they're using actual motion animation on the guns. The guns are no longer just static designs. They're getting real guns in, firing them for the real test range with their machines all hooked up to them. So when they look at their computer, they have the real life animations of the guns. So they're pretty much taking the extra step when it comes to making yes. this game. And even with reloads, they've now got a guy coming in and he's doing all individual reloads for every single weapon. And it's amazing because each weapon's now going to have about five different reload animations depending on your environment. So for a shotgun, if you're surrounded by three Zs, you can throw in two shells at a time. If you're just walking away on a train on a trader um, wave, so in between wave one and two, say you reload individually at a slower pace. Okay. So, so just to add back more variety. Yes, variety. Every single game I've talked about has variety. God yeah. damn it. I'm talking about variety. I should I should I shouldn't call this the squishy show. I should call it the variety show. Exactly. <laughs> But yes. Well, it's variety oh. when I'm here. Yes. Oh, this this will be amazing. New Zeds, multiple voice actors, not just two now for male and female. Um, story mode, they're keeping it the same as the sort of sort of the objective mode they added in. It's going to be a bit more objective based with a bit more of a story behind it, linking it all together. But you're still going to have the good old killing for one wave after wave, kill, get to ten, kill the patriarch. So has there been a release date? Set. Um, currently, Tripwire hasn't confirmed anything, but I've been looking online, I've been looking online, and lots of places have said March next year, March to May, that is when they're expected the release. Whether that... I, I may not say March, because it was only, when was it? It like, was only announced off. a couple of off. months ago, then again, exactly. this has been in the works since 2012. Yeah, but you know Killing Floor, so, they like to add a bunch of things, so yes. actually, it may not be that far-fetched, because they could still be adding to it because what the they've said is they want to do um steam green light so that could okay. very well possibly be the green light version of the game or early access and then we get the whole game later on that would be good that would That'd be, be good. very good that would be good for me because then all of a sudden you just see squishy plays squishy plays squishy plays and about <laughs> 300 different killing for episodes all about five hours long and you realize i've died because i haven't eaten in four months and <laughs> I hate when that happens. Yeah, I know. Don't you hate it when you die because you haven't eaten? Anyway, uh, yes, yeah. I'm very looking That's how it is it. in Mystery Dungeon. Exactly. You don't eat, your character dies. I know, lol. And the music, the music is amazing. I love the music. If you paid attention to the trailer music while we were talking, which I'll add a link to in the description as well, it is so good. Oh, man. I'm, I'm a fan of heavy metal, and I love the original Killing Floor music, but this one's just one step further. Just well, that's what you've got to try to go with with the sequel. Well, yeah, but I mean the music, man. Like, you could try and keep the music the same because the music's still good. And Killing Floor 1, like it's really good, but this, this is the, they've managed to take it to a whole other level. Well, okay. that's good to hear because as, um, um, the main job of a sequel is to improve on the original game. Yes, which, but while keeping what was good about the game. Which is why many I, of us I, have been complexed about what are they going to add, which also leads me next to the perk system that they're revising. Each time you level up, you get two perks to choose from. You can choose left or right perk, whatever it is. Each perk will do something different. One will be more solo based, one will be more team based, but you can swap them out. So, say you're using a shotgun, yeah, and you support specialist. There's one that allows you to reload faster, 25%, and there's one that allows you to weld faster, 25%. The welding affects the team, the reload affects you. So, if you go to play online and you're playing with people who like welding doors and blocking yourselves in with shotguns, that would be very much of a helpful perk to have. But then yeah, when you leave that. that, so you go back to playing single player, you can equip the reload. Okay, so, so again, variety. Yes, so you can swap them out. I don't know if you can swap out during the game. They haven't said anything about that yet, as far as I'm aware. That I may, I may be wrong, you can comment on that. But yes, yes, very much so. Much more variety. Okay, awesome. 
Alright, so next we've gotten through our games. Actually, no, no, well, we've sort of gone through our games. Next up, I think we should talk about the new 3DS. This is coming, uh, literally the new, new 3DS. Yeah, it's the coming. name isn't very creative. It's literally the new 3DS. So well, that's going to come to like those awkward conversations where you're at like EB Games, you're like, hey, do you have any used new 3DSs? <laughs> That was almost as bad as our original um, name for this talk show, which was literally just the talk show. So, the hey, talk <laughs> hey guys, can I, can I watch the talk show? Not yeah. But anyway, yes, it, will, it, it can lead to some very awkward conversations. Hey, do you have any used new 3DSs? Or do you have any new new 3DSs? I really, think I don't they have new, new, but I have new. <laughs> I think they really could have done gone a step further with the with name. That. Like, if you look at the the DS, it had um the DS, the DS Lite, the DSi. Like they always changed. Like, they didn't go DS, new DS, new new. DS, you know. So you could even call it 3DSi if you really yeah, wanted you to rehash it. Yeah. But I mean, I mean, I mean, I'm looking forward to it. It does have a new like kind of little nub on it for like controlling, uh -oh. as well as two more. Is that what they call them nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> and they um, and they also have two more of a triggers, which I think is going to be used for games such as Xenoblade Chronicles. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm but um, besides that, I don't think any other games have been said for that to be used. But yeah. pretty much, I'm looking forward to it. Will I spend the money on it? Probably not. I do already own a 3DS. Exactly. I own a 3DS. I've been looking at the specs on this thing, and the specs are most definitely better. It definitely yeah. runs games better. But for currently, there's not many games that are really going to push the 3DS. Xenocriticals you know, may very well do that, which is why may very well need a new 3DS. But until I can see that it needs that extra push, I'm not going to be pushed to buy one. Yeah, that's exactly how I feel. And plus, since I've been trying to get a 3DS capture card, or I'm going to get a 3DS capture card soon, exactly. Um, it, it, it can't be modded yet. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, and the way the 3DS capture card works is it takes the whole back of it off and it makes its own back and sticks it on. Yep. Right, so you can add things. So the shoulder buttons w could kind of be called useless because you're plugging it into your computer and everything. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, it's it's a bit of a hit and miss. We might have a look at it. I might still review it when it actually comes out. Go to Weeby Games, ask if I can borrow a copy or two. <laughs> They'll be like, no, get out. <laughs> hey, man, can I borrow a new, new 3DS? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bring it back new, not used, I swear. <laughs> Alright guys, so that's that done. So that's all of our console things to do. So on to ourselves now, me and Arodiad. I'm getting a new PC, as is Arodiad. Mine will be coming in January. Um, Arodiad will tell you, I'm pumped, man. I'm talking 980, 980 overclocked graphics cards, 28,000, 16 gigabytes DDR4 RAM. And like I said before, I can say numbers too. Yeah, yeah, we, we had this exact same conversation. But, oh, oh man, I'm pumped. This thing will blow everything I own out the water. We will be getting 60 frames a second easy recording on many games. This thing can run Crisis at 80 frames a second. Right, the original? Yes. Crisis 3, you can get 70 to 60. 60 to 70. Well, Crisis is known for being a benchmarking series. Exactly. So for things like that, if we know we can get that, imagine the fans can get other games. So there's many new games now that this will open up, many new Let's Plays, many new series that we can then do. Okay. And same with you, Rodia. What about your new computer? Well, I am going to be looking at getting a new computer, because if you guys do not know, my computer is absolutely terrible, which is why I try to stick towards um, GBA games, because they run at 20 frames per second, because the, the GBA wasn't able to re uh, run at 30, and I still kind of lag at that sometimes. <laughs> so that just explains how bad my computer is. So an upgrade is definitely needed, after, especially after one year on YouTube. Mm -hmm. So with that, hopefully I'll be able to play a lot more games, like that are harder to run so and i can like even run like ds games not just gba <laughs> games <laughs> ds games guys i can start running ds games what yeah. a selling point for me well i'm a pokemon channel it's pokemon it's i guess yeah. so we have got a bunch of new games coming out here i'll start with my list of let's plays that we're going to go through this is not all of them mind you they may be added they may be removed there is a couple of specials that i'm not going to talk about right now <laughs> so first on the list alan wake Gonna go through that. Obviously, when I get my new computer, that'll be much good. 100% orange juice. Much and good. That's such yeah, good English. Much good. I've, I've, I've passed English, man. But so I can't say I. I can't say I passed. I finished I'm my thank, English exam. I, I thank you for bringing the state average down. Thanks. Not a problem, man. Yeah, 100% <laughs> orange juice. I can't wait to play that. That's a great multiplayer game. I got a couple of mates who got that. I'm gonna try and get an road yet into it, so that'll be good. 
Anti-Chamber, if any of you have played that, that game messes my head, but we'll go through that. Bioshock's always good. Crisis, obviously, when we get the new computer. The Fear series, Fear 1 through the 3, that's that's really good. Borderlands, hopefully I can play that with a Rodiad. Hey! So hopefully me and him can start having some good FPS times together. Hey Tom, It'll probably Tom, just be Tom, more Tom, of me Tom. crying and what? What do gay horses eat? What? Hi! Squishy's done. Squishy's done, guys. I can't do this. <laughs> it's been 40 minutes, man. Come on. <laughs> you gotta okay. respect this kind of stuff from me. <laughs> okay, so yes, Borderlands with him. Cost COD Zombies on World at War. I found a bunch of custom maps. Amazing stuff. Amazing stuff. So we'll go through that later. Not in this video. Pull in the next Squishy Talks. Um, Cloud Build. That's a great game. I just got that. Deus Ex Human Revolution. Amazing. Far Cry 2, 3, and 4. Not the first one, because I hate the first one. It's too linear, the rest are good. Just Cause 2, just so we can fly around in a helicopter. Just Cause. Just Cause. Yeah, I just know, cause. I just played that one. Killing Floor 1 and 2, obviously, you should have expected that one. Metal Gear Solid 5, when that comes out, I'll either be doing that straight off of the PS4, because I'm planning to get a capture card, or on the computer, either or. Long Live the Queen, just so you can hear me cry some more, like we do in Mother Love already. Payday 2, because I've got a few mates who've got that. Hopefully a Rodan will pick that up, so we can play that. Oh, all Resident by the way, e yep. I'm going to stop you here. This is why I need a new computer, because I can't even run Payday 2's menu on 30 No, you can't. Second. It lags no. too much. It I, lags it'd be a push to menu. say 10 frames 15, a second. 10 to 15 frames on the menu. So, exactly. Yeah, he needs a new computer. <laughs> um, all Resident Evils, 1 through to 6. I do plan on including Code Veronica in that much. On that note, on that note, we will, I will, I can't say we will, I'll be doing a Twitch stream sometime in the month when we get new internet of me clocking Resident Evil 1 through to 6 in 24 hours. So, <laughs> I've already had last, but it's possible. Resident Evil 1, 2, 3, I can do in yeah, two and a half possible, hours. Yeah, it's possible, but not when you're doing it. Shut up. I, I can do this faster than your computer can load. A. I'll have Resident Evil 1 finished B by the time... C, D. <laughs> you know what we need to do then? How about I'll verse you in Pokemon one day and I'll beat, my, beat Emerald faster than you. Yeah, you probably could. It's a home turf battle, man. Exactly. So is Resident Evil. Anyway, yeah, I'll be doing Resident Evil 1 to 6 on Twitch. Hopefully you will join me for that. I'll be doing Jill in 1, Leon in 2, obviously Jill in 3 because that's what you can play as. 4, Leon obviously, Chris I'll do in 5, and I'll do Leon and Elena's campaign playing as Leon in 6. I won't be clocking them all 100%, I'll just be doing the one playthrough just so we can get them out of the way and see if I can do it. Who knows, maybe put a real record inside. So that's, that will be for Twitch, that will be that I'm looking forward to the most. Stalker series, I've got all three Stalker games, I'm looking about that. State of the K, that was an Xbox, now port to PC, it's very good, so we'll go for that. Yet another zombie defense, we'll be doing that with a Rodiad. That will be, that will be very, well yeah. With my I, computer. Well even your computer should be able to run this. This game Yeah, but not record. Run. Yeah, that's true. So, yeah, I'll, I'll be releasing another video on, uh, on me, sorry. Wow. Oh. I'll be recording that in the next couple of days anyway on my own, just so you guys how I can see it. Um, and I'll possibly wow. run... Wow. What? <laughs> Already it's lost it. And hopefully we're doing a modded multiplayer Minecraft series. So when Already gets his new computer and I get mine, hopefully we'll be able to do that some together. That will be some very fun times indeed. But don't expect much from that, guys. Don't expect much. I won't be becoming a Minecraft channel. I've had people ask me about it before, and I won't be doing it. At most, it will be a multiple... We may go on season after season, depends on how we go. You may, you, you guys may love it, but yeah, I'm, I will not be moving on to Minecraft in Series only. That is definitely no, no. You guys can beg as much as you want. I'd rather leave than do that. I'm sorry. Okay, well, <laughs> my list is definitely not as long as that. In fact, nowhere near as long as that. However, if you guys do know, I do a lot of challenge runs in Pokemon, so Nuzlocks and Wedlocks. And in the future, I am planning to do a bunch more of those, whether it's a hack game like Light Platinum that I'm doing now, whether it's an actual game or like 5th gen, whatever. That's what I'm planning to do. I'm also planning to do a lot of Nintendo games, such as like uh, right now I'm doing Super Mario World. I also did Kirby. You can do other Nintendo franchises, like maybe even Zelda. If I'm not really a big fan of Zelda, don't kill me. Um, but the one thing I'm looking forward to, and you guys might be thinking this is kind of stupid, but I've been trying to uh, get the original Spyro trilogy recorded. So the ones on PS1, PS, uh, well not PS1, PS2, PS3, PS1, 1, 2, and 3. So, the first one, second one, and third one, all 100%. I'm really looking forward to that, but I do need a different and a new computer to do that. So, I am looking forward to that. That's going to be 
amazing. And plus, I'm going to do some Phoenix Wright here and there, because I love Phoenix Wright so much. It's so one of my favorite series. So expect some nice cosplaying from me and Nick. Um, <laughs> we love Phoenix Wright. And what's Objection! Like, on what grounds, Edward? Because <laughs> you're not right. Oh! And now I'm just going to edit this, and all you're going to see is me smashing my keyboard in anger. Oh, all right. But yeah, we both love it. I win, you're down a keyboard. I've got three. Shut up. Yeah, you'll be. Doesn't mean you're not down one. I'll go buy another. Then you're wasting money. Two bucks at Big W. Anyway, anyway, back on track. We lost it again. We keep doing that. We did that so many times in the last. Well, after 45 minutes, you kind of start to lose track. Yeah. Anyway, so things that are affecting us next year. I'll go first. Um. Obviously, I hope you're going to university. So that will be taking up more time, so I may have to move back to once every two days recording and uploading. I don't know. I may still be able to get one out every day. I'm going to hopefully. Um, broadband National Network is coming to my area, so I'll get unlimited internet. Ooh. That's always good. When we're currently capped at 500 gigs, and this annoys me. Um, yeah, that's I know. what I'm capped at. Yeah, I know. And um, I've got family coming in from the UK, November to January, so things very well may be going a lot slower then. Alright, well, well, for me, the main thing that's affecting me is besides uni, because if you guys don't know not, Tom and I have just finished term. year 12. Yeah, man, Tom. I term, love Tom. Tom is term. great. I'm term from is South great. Park. Tom, Tom. <laughs> um, we both finished year 12, so we're both going to uni next year. Don't know how that's going to interfere, but I'm going to try my best to keep updates regular and episodes regular. But the main thing is with my family, because we're Greek, we're very loud, so I can't record when they're at home. So I literally have to wait when the house is by itself to record. That's going to be another stepping stone. But I will try my best to keep up videos for you guys, whether it's uh, one video a day, two videos a day. No, not even two. One video a day, one video every two days, or something like that, pretty much. Yeah, move into a more regular schedule. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we pretty much come to the end now. Just got a few... OST remixes, can't even really say it's a good OST, well, can't even say it's an OST remix. Phoenix Wright has an amazing dubstep done by a fan, I'll stick that in the link, I can't recall the name yet, but it is amazing, I highly suggest you listen to it. Any anime remix, obviously, they're always good, there's a nice Persona 4 jazz that I'll also include in the description. Anything from you, Rodia? Um, well, the only, like, real remixes that I really listen to are Pokemon remixes, and Glitch X City is an amazing artist who does a lot of remixes with Pokemon, which is why I'm mentioning her, believe it or not. Um, she, like, I always use her music in the grinding montage, it's really amazing, so I will make sure to send Tom the link and put it in the description below. Beautiful will do. Alright guys, so that's pretty much it from us on the Squishy Show, so there's a recap now. Pokemon Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire coming out, both pumped for that. Resident Evil, obviously pumped for that. Borderlands, probably going to get it sometime in the next year and do a video I'm getting it. Yeah, we're both going to get it. Persona 4 Arena, I'm getting that day one. You'll have videos out repeatedly on that. Kingdom Hearts 3 and yes. 2.5. I already is looking forward to that much more than I am, although I oh, very well I love may, Kingdom Hearts so I much. very well may go back to that. Killing Floor 2, well, I'm done. All of my Let's Plays that I said about earlier and already ads. And the, like, the minor ones. Yeah, the three. The three. <laughs> four if you count Phoenix, right? Yeah, four. So, I guess that's about it, guys. We'll wrap this up before 50 um, minutes. Well, before I say my goodbyes and head off, I just want to remind you guys, if you have enjoyed this episode of The Squishy Show, feel free to leave a like on this video. It really helps us out. Subscribe to Tom if you haven't. And not only that, feel free to leave questions of what uh, what games you'd like us to talk about and everything like that exactly. for the next episode. Exactly, yeah, for the next month's episode. And even if we get enough, we very well may move it to every two weeks. If we have enough interest in this, it's all up to you guys, however we do it. Um, if you guys enjoy it, we'll keep putting it out. Exactly, pretty much, yeah. And we've got Q&As, obviously, that we can do if you really want. Um, live streaming, obviously, which is always a possibility. Alright, guys, so I think that's about it from us. Pretty much. Thank you very much for tuning in today, guys. Um, yeah, thank you very much. If you haven't liked the road yet, go check him out for Pokemon if, if you like If you that. haven't liked him, go check him out. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> nah, if you haven't checked him out yet, go have a look. He does some good stuff. He makes a lot of puns. So if you if you like puns, you'll like a Rodiad stuff. Oh, I love puns. I know he does. He makes them so bad and terrible. It makes me cry every time. He sends me <laughs> one every day, and, and I just hit my head against the wall hoping I'm going to go into coma. Come on. It, it doesn't work. I'm, I keep the... getting resuscitated. Oh my god, I you deserve
punishment. Cause that's amazing. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> We're ending this right now. <laughs> <laughs> Say you good boys. <laughs> well, anyway, thank you for having me, Tom. Hope you guys did enjoy. Like Tom said, if you did enjoy, leave a like favorite on this video. Make sure to check out Tom if you haven't. He makes great content. And yeah, don't have much else to say. This has been a roadie ad. I'll catch you guys later. Bye, right, guys. Peace. Squishy out. Have fun. And I'll see you all next episode of this. Because Muslims, whatever we're doing. See you, guys. Boy.